I think uh, one of the major reasons for India's poverty is overpopulation. I think India is poor because there are high illiteracy rates. Illiterate not because of themselves but basically because of the various schemes which are not being implemented properly. I think it is the colonial history, lack of resources, widespread corruption, government inefficiency and improper implementation of policies. People in India are poor because they are not getting the wage they deserve. an important question all of us have asked at some point or the other. What we really need to ask is why aren't there enough opportunities? Why are our wages low? Why is there corruption? And why are our people illiterate? We want to debunk perennial myths about the causes of poverty and prosperity. Why is there so break it down by asking more and more questions. And develop the ability of young people to use evidence, reason, and data to get to the root cause of the problems and not just address its symptoms. Yeah, I mean, what what is why is it important to use space well? Why is it important to use resources well? India's growth story has been built on the back of free enterprise and business. What we need is to move from a model of government control and aid to a model of free enterprise to allow people the freedom to be able to solve their own problems in the way they know best. So it's not that too many people are a problem, it's not that too few resources are a problem, it's not that um, uh, illiteracy per se is a problem. There's in the last 20 years we've seen enormous benefits from liberalization. But this liberalization has largely affected industry and commerce, which is the top gears of the economy, if you will. But what hasn't happened is that the lower uh, segments of the country, so for example, the poorest of the poor, haven't seen uh, reap the benefits of this liberalization. It has happened because when we liberalized uh, industry, we changed the license permit quota raj for the rich, we didn't change it for the poor. Uh, even today, a street vendor cannot ply his wear or, or sell his goods despite the fact that he's trying to earn an honest living because he's got licenses and permits to obtain. Similarly with people like cycle rickshaw vendors, similarly with artisans. There are all these groups at the uh, bottom of the pyramid, what we think of today, um, that have not seen the impact of liberalization because they've not had any liberalization. Inclusive growth requires inclusive reforms. So unless you liberalize for the poorest of the poor, you're not going to see a change, a sea change in their standard of living the way we have for the middle classes and, uh, and the upper classes. In if only we can think and look at the problem differently, we might be able to choose differently. As of now, we are unable to capitalize any of the factors of production that help societies grow out of poverty. That means we have created a system whereby land, labor, capital, all the three factors of production which I mentioned, we are unable to capitalize in our own country. We are poor not because we don't have assets. We are poor because we are unable to capitalize whatever we have. What's the answer? institutions and policies that determine economic success. So we have the institutional policies, but the ones that really matter are those that promote economic freedom, the freedom to go and make money. It is very critical for the youth today to understand the moral and intellectual foundations of a free society, a society that will advance the dignity and prosperity of the poor. This is why Freedom Caliban is such an important program for us. Many have argued that India is the wealthiest country, spiritually. But we need to engage with our future leaders on the importance of material wealth to bring about prosperity and growth in the country. Uh, my question is that, if people were allowed to do that, wouldn't there be... Uh, before attending the session, I had these stereotype notions that uh, mostly overpopulation and things like casteism were the main reason why India was backward and poor. But attending this session, it helped me uh, get 
out of that preconceived notion and eradicate those wrongful beliefs that I had. I found out that most of the common myths about the reason for poverty in the country were completely debunked in the session. I came to know that if uh, we provide the economic freedom to the poor, then the economic situation of India would improve. And it actually helped me uh, think about what interventions we can make in India, as in uh, giving economic freedom to the people of India and uh, capitalizing on the resources that we have. So the lesser the government, the minimal the government, the better the country, the, the better the development of the country. Freedom is not something which can be instilled in you. It's just there. It comes from within us. It's not something which others can grant us or it's not something that, you know, somebody has to give us. You don't need permission to be free. So people need to be made aware of why India is actually poor. People need to be made aware of why economic freedom is that important. I mean, the session has really given me a completely new perspective on this issue and it's been just amazing.